Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple video 3D button uh, with virtually no programming. So here's a button right here. Let's run the application. And you roll over, and you get a little uh, thumbnail here, roll off, and you get a little glow, of course, around the image as well. And click on that, and it flips around, and there's your video playing. And this is the G.I. Joe movie, of course. And if you click on the video, then it flips back around, and there's your button, and then roll over again. And click on that, and you got your video playing again. And so you can imagine this as one component that you would basically put in a carousel or in a video plane or whatever and feed data into the backside using Flash Builder. Now I'm going to show you how to build all this up with almost no programming at all using um, Flash Catalyst and Flash Builder. But before you do that, let me show you what we're going to give you today. So here's the address you can get all the code from, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash lv3d forward slash downloads forward slash list. And what you're going to get here today, of course, is the little code thing here. Text where the code is. Uh, G.I. Joe FLV, uh, uh, G.I. Joe uh, Photoshop, uh, uh, a little pic of G.I. Joe, uh, the Flash Catalyst program, and also the Flash Builder program right here. So let's go and show you how to build all this up using Flash Catalyst. So we are in Flash Catalyst right now, and I'm going to just basically show you how to get started with Flash Catalyst. Then we're going to pull up the application we built, and then we're going to bring that into Flash Builder and show you how to reprogram that. So there's quite a few steps here, and we might not get through all of it in this first video, but we'll have one or two to follow. So uh, there's ways, different ways to bring things into Flash Catalyst, you know, from an Illustrator, from Photoshop, from an FXG file, or from just start from scratch with Adobe Flash Catalyst project. That's what I'm going to do for here. Now, there's a lot of different approaches to Flash Catalyst. I mean, you could be a designer, and then you pass it on to a developer. But I've worked a lot in academia where I have to do both. And really what I'm using Flash Catalyst for today is to show you how to build a component that will go into a larger set. So let's hit Adobe Flash Catalyst. And uh, I'm just going to call this a vid button. We'll keep 800 by 600. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to change the background to black. Hit OK. And then uh, Flash Catalyst will generate that. Now, if you determine that at the end you don't like those parameters, you can always change those within the program. I'll show you how to do that here. So if you don't like the background, the color, or the size, just come to Modify and go to Art, Board, Size, and Color. And you can change its width and height or its color right here. And that can come in handy when you get stuck. I made mine black because I'm going to be working with glow and I want to see the white glow on the black background. Uh, what I'm going to come along here do now is I'm going to bring in uh, an image. So let's import an image. And let's bring in the G.I. Joe picture. There you go. And I'll just move it to kind of center here. Now, I'm going to show you how to work with Flash Catalyst here, and then in the next video, we're actually going to bring up the finished product and uh, apply what we learned and, and, and show you how it was done so we can accelerate the process. All, otherwise, this is going to be uh, six or seven videos. So, But it's actually fairly easy to work with Flash Catalyst. There's just a few things you need to keep in mind. Now, I want to add an interaction to this, but first thing I want to do is I want to turn this into a component. Now, I'm doing this because of my style of programming with Flash Builder. You may not want to do it this way, but I basically want to have all that code embedded. And so I'm going to create a component here. And just hit Component. And it's just a generic component. And I'm going to click on it again. And guess what? I'm going to click on the, I'm going to build another component. And that will nest all my code. And that gives me the ability in a sense to modulize all my work and get these components to flow nicely together. What I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to show you how to add some rotation and hover action. So I'm going to duplicate the same state. There we go. And I'm going to add first a rotation. So you look at the bottom here. If I click on that image, you look at the bottom here, we have a transitions. It's like a timeline with behaviors in a sense. Here's a state 1 to state 2, and state 2 to state 1. Make sure you are on the correct transition. It does make a difference. So I'm going to do is a simple rotation. So I'm going to hit rotate. And over here you can see it's going to rotate me 90 degrees. So let's run it. And watch the interaction from state 1 to state 2. Simple rotation. Now the neat thing about this is I can speed this up by just changing this timeline or make it longer. So here it is a lot faster. Move that back. Or I can have that transition occur at certain times within the timeline. So there you have it. Let's add a 3D rotation to it. So I'm coming along here, rotate 3D. And I can make that rotate 180 degrees, 360 degrees, whatever amount of degrees I want. For this particular uh, item, I want to just rotate 180 degrees. And let's come along here and run it. And there's my rotation. It rotates 90 and 180 at the same time. Neat little interaction. Now what I want to do is I actually want to put a hover on that so it glows when I roll over it. 
So in state two, I'll let that be my rollover state. And all I want to do is come over here, click on that item. And in this uh, properties menu down here, you can see you have you can see you have blend mode here, which is wonderful, by the way. A ton of blend uh, options. And you also have uh, filters. I'm going to go ahead and put a glow filter on this thing. And I'm going to choose white. I could actually do a rotation or a knockout if I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to mint map this strength, so I'll put an 8 here and a 2 here. There you go. And it doesn't really matter as far as their opacity is concerned. I don't have to worry about mint mapping that, but I do want to mint map those filters. And what is a mint map? Basically putting things in terms of multiples of 2. And I have my screenshot here, and I can see I got a little glow here now. That's pretty nice. And when I'm in state 1, it doesn't glow anymore. And when I'm state 2, it does glow. So now I actually want to add that interaction code-wise. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to that original uh, component. And I'm just going to right-click on it and hit Add Interaction. And so when I'm on... So when I roll over, so let's choose roll over. Basically, I want to go to state 2 when I'm in state 1. Hit OK. And let's add another interaction. And when I, uh, I'm in uh, a roll out, I want to go to state 1 when I'm in state 2. Now, you got to be careful about this, that you get this right, because it can... Uh, sometimes Flash Catalyst, especially in the beta version, can overwrite code or write code again, and your interactions won't work. You'll just have to start over again. And it's just something you have to learn to, to work with. So sometimes you have to be pretty exacting, get it right the first time with Flash Catalyst, or you have to start over again. And that's just, I think it's because we're in beta right now. I'm sure those items will be cleaned up. So what I've done, I've actually should have a nice interaction here. When I roll over, I get a glow. When I roll off, the glow is gone. Roll over, get a glow. Roll off, the glow is gone. There you go. And there's my rollover. And rollout is working. There you go. And rollover. So, uh, simple interaction. Uh, very easy to do without one line of code. I've actually got something really kind of cool looking in 3D. And uh, if you're used to paper vision days and they're way 3D days, it took a lot to make these things happen and spin around like this. A lot of extra code in classes. Here this all happened with drag and drop techniques. So, basically what I'm going to do now in the next video we're going to uh, bring up the finished application of Flash Catalyst and go through all the pieces and show you how it was made. And then we're going to bring that into Flash Builder and show you how to add the video component and work with that and do just a little bit of coding to get a real dynamic effect. Hey, let's go back and take a look at the finished product one more time and show you where we're going. So here's the finished product. You roll over, you get a G.I. Joe. You click on that and you get your little video playing. And you click on that and that rolls back and click on it again and you get your video playing. And all of this is going to be done with very, very little coding. I'm probably going to put in about maybe two or three lines of code here to make all this happen. The rest of it is automatically done for you in Flash Builder. And if you're used to those days where you had to code and code and code to make something like this happen, you're going to really enjoy this new technology. Okay, got a second and third video on the way. Just keep tuned. This is Mike Lively.